Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody has a great start uh, to their weekend. Hope everybody survived um, probably yesterday. I, I know it sounds weird to say with a 2% rally in NASDAQ 100, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, please like, share, subscribe. You know, join the movement, right? Join the movement. I, I promise uh, what I'm about to say doesn't happen a lot. Um, but it's a very, very unique way of looking at the market on a day-to-day -day basis based on the previous day. And we'll get to that in a second. So let's start up, right? Let's start up. I don't think it's possible that I could have been more wrong, uh, going into Friday session. I, I, I don't think it was any more possible. And it wasn't, you know, if you've been watching this broadcast, um, for just even the last few years, I, I've been doing this now. I'm hosting the, the Access Trader platform uh, going on year 14 right now. But if you've been watching just in the last couple of years, you kind of know I'm pretty on the ball. I, I kind of know what to expect the next day. I, I could read sentiment pretty well. Uh, and once that technical, uh, t uh, sentiment gets correlated by technicals, usually price action is going to follow. So if you watched, if you watched Thursday's video, um, well, yeah, Thursday's video, um, I was, in, I couldn't have been more bearish going into Friday's session. I, I don't think it's possible. Uh, and, and here's the data points. It wasn't just because I was guessing, um, this is my first year trading. There was a lot of really good data points. So let's kind of back up, right? Let's kind of back up, uh, going into, uh, in, going throughout the week. So Monday and Tuesday went, nothing really, uh, stood out. You had, uh, earnings come out, uh, this week. And if you look at the earnings scoreboard, uh, so far, pretty mix. Um, the notable names. I don't want to go through everything, but the notable names: uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft. They didn't. They didn't love their quarter. Let's be honest, right? They didn't love their quarter. Uh, Tesla. They didn't love their quarter. And Netflix. Right? They didn't love their quarter. Um, you know, the ones that did pretty well uh, carried the same carried the same kind of theme. Right? This whole AI theme. They mention them a lot. They talk about it a lot. It's like the new quote unquote dot com references uh during uh during 1999 and you know google did incredibly well uh meta did really really well again we were we were highlighting uh the you know the massive call buying coming in those names and the surprise of the week was roku right roku on friday which was an absolute uh huge 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 move uh but the, the scoreboard so far going into the fomc really didn't um you know move the needle the market was still fine more than fine the, the action was still uh more than fine the bulls were obviously in control and then we got to uh the fomc right and the fomc was probably the biggest dud i could remember um probably in the last few years of price uh reaction okay uh the market did not do anything on uh, the fomc day instead they saved all the fireworks to thursday and friday and Thursday's session came, uh, the market was very, very strong. We were long, you know, we had some great, great pivots in the morning. We went to cash, because usually I'm done about 95% uh, going into the afternoon session. And if you guys remember, on Thursday's session, we had this absolute violent, absolute violent reversal. Cues went from, literally, we talked about this Thursday night, we talked about uh, the Qs went from 385 all the way down to 375 within an hour. And in the process, right, in the process, it confirmed, took back the 5 and the 10-day moving average, closing at the bottom of the range. So as you can imagine, anybody who's been trading for a long time, when you see not only a huge reversal engulfing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 days of action, but it gave back two major rising supports the five and the 10 day which are short-term and intermediate um sentiments of what the market is going to do so everything you know everything that night was i had a hundred percent short bias uh going into friday session again you couldn't have been more uh you couldn't have been more bearish possibly at least for the next day 
uh, that I was. Uh, the only good thing about it is um, I don't guess, right? I don't guess. Um, I had uh, a Tesla short. Uh, I had a Tesla short overnight from Thursday to Friday. Uh, and now it sounds crazy. I know it sounds horrible. Tesla's up, you know, huge. But uh, we were up, you know, we're up about five points uh, on Tesla into the close. And basically, I lost about a dollar, a little less than a dollar on my runner. So it wasn't that bad. So the trade actually uh, worked out, uh, you know, worked out pretty well. Just very disappointing. And Thursday night, you know, Thursday night, I was sitting there and I go, how can anybody possibly in their right mind be long overnight after this close, right? I even said it, I go, man, oh man, you got to be on really strong pills to be long overnight after that close, closing on the bottom channel and taking back two major moving averages. And this is when the market reminds you, and I don't care how long you're trading, this is the market reminds you is you're not shit right? You're not shit. And, and the market reminds you that and humbles you that, humbles your thinking every single, you know, random parts of your career. And Friday was definitely the you're not shit type of, uh, you're not shit type of uh, scenario, uh, at least for me. Yeah, Friday come out, the PCE number came out. Uh, it's basically reiterating the point that easing of inflation data continues to come in uh, showing promise. Again, obviously we're not there yet. And next thing you know, you know, again, you can't even make this up. Next thing you know, we literally not only, you know, gap and go, which basically I said, you have to be out of your mind to buy a gap up, right? The day after a major reversal, but that worked as well. And next thing you know, the $10 that we lost, right? The 10 bucks that we lost on the queues in the last hour, we made it back through the whole day. And now we're literally literally a stone throws away back from where we were on Thursday at three o'clock, right before this nasty self. So, you know, look, the longer you trade in this business, two things are going to happen. You're going to realize you, you're eventually going to see it all, right? Eventually you will see it all. Eventually you'll go through every single thing that a trader goes through. You'll go on a massive, uh, massive uh, dump in your career, massive drawdown that you, it feels like you can't get out. And then after a while, when you get more screen time, more experience, you're going to go on a massive run that eventually everybody goes to. The market's also going to tell you that you are not smarter than the market. You might think you're trading long enough. The market's always going to throw you a curveball. This was the curveball. This was not only a curveball. This was this curveball, screwball, uh, sinker, spitball, everything possible, right? Knuckleball, everything possible into the dirt. And it landed on Friday. So if you look at what happened, and a lot of my friends, when I'm telling you a lot of my friends got murdered, Come Friday, thank God we were, you know, we were only short Tesla, um, you know, Tesla with, with a five point marker, so it wasn't wasn't that bad. Because Tesla opened uh, opened up uh, up three, gave us an opportunity to get up. But my, some of my buddies just got absolutely murdered. I mean, it, and, and and I spoke to a lot of guys throughout the day on uh, Thursday into uh, into Friday's session, and all they kept on saying is how the after this happened, right? It just doesn't make sense. And my reminder is it never makes sense, right? We always talk about, you know, people always complaining about a market melt up for the last, uh, for the last uh, six months, for the first five, six months uh, of the year, actually seven months of the year now, right? And people say, well, this, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. But you, when you get an overnight close, when you have a situation that we had technical damage occur with an engulfing candle that took down four days of buying and we still made up that whole move on Friday, even the most experienced trader, even the most fabulous trader, I don't care what your process is, you're going to be humbled, you're going to be wrong, and then you're going to be asking yourself, where was that license plate of the truck that just ran me over? So it's kind of, to kind of summarize, Long has got absolutely destroyed on Thursday from 3 o'clock into the close, and Short's got absolutely destroyed going short overnight. Uh, into Friday's open in the PCE. So I was wrong. I'm talking about wrong. But the greatest part about what I do, and I consider myself a very, very good um, risk manager. I'm very, very good at it. Um, nowhere near the best trade in the world. Don't care to be, don't want to be. I don't know what the best trade in the world is. It sure as hell is not me. But I'm very good at protecting my capital. I, I, don't, I don't put on necessary risk. So a lot of traders, what they would continue to do is pile on shorts throughout the whole move. I was just sitting there waiting, you know, waiting, letting my game plan play out because I, I I seen so many times that the market gaps up and then an hour later, 40 minutes later, it craps out. So I was waiting for that. By the time 11 o'clock came, 11.30 came, um, I was sitting there and I was just sitting there and I'm like, wow, okay, 
and I didn't put on a single, I did not put on uh, a single day trade uh, for uh, for the morning session. And then by the time lunch time came, I was like, you know what? It's been a fabulous week. I got it wrong. My game plan was wrong. Let me start on Monday, right? I went, you know, I took a half a day off. I decompressed. Um, I kind of, you know, just got my thoughts together and I feel great. I feel absolutely great now and I'm ready to tackle uh, the new week. And that's, you know, and that's a very, very important thing that many new traders uh, are not able to do. They're not able to understand that their game plan was wrong. They're not wrong. You don't have to be wrong. You, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be financially wrong if you're ther theoretically wrong. Like I was wrong. My game plan was wrong. The price action that, you know, corresponded in my research the night before was 100% wrong, but I didn't, wasn't there sitting there Monday morning shorting stocks until my, my head exploded. No, you just kind of sit back, relax and say, hey, my game plan didn't work. I was wrong theoretically. It's Friday. There's some phenomenal action throughout the week. You know what? It's just not my day. It's I missed my window. The window is closed. I'm not about to start trading in the afternoon. Let me take off, clear my head, and start again on Monday. So it's a very, very important lesson, guys. When your game plan goes the other way, and we say this all the time, it's okay to be wrong, right? I'm wrong every single day. Just don't be wrong financially. Don't be a stubborn mule sitting there and say, well, it doesn't make sense. Let me just keep on going in that direction. No, you don't do that. You're an adult. You're a professional trader. I don't care if you're trading for 24 years like myself or 24 months. You're a professional trader. Your, 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 your money is as good as everybody else's. So instead of compounding the problem and acting and reacting in an emotional way, just take a step back, understand that, you know what? Certain days, you're just your research is not going to play out the way you thought. And you have two choices. Either try to chase performance, right? Chase performance, which is very, very incredibly wrong because that's an emotional act. And the last thing you want to do is continue to trade emotionally, right? The longer you continue to trade emotionally in your career, the higher probability your, your career will uh, end short. Or you could put yourself in a situation and say, you know what? It's okay, right? It's okay. I missed my window. Uh, Monday starts a new, a new, uh, a new week. The data that's gonna that I'm gonna look at on the weekend is going to support my next day thing. I won't be emotional, and I'll be technically ready for my game plan, hopefully, to react and confirm. So it was a very uh, crazy week. Uh, actually, no, excuse me, it was a crazy uh, last two days. The week was actually very orderly, uh, very very good, solid week. Uh, we saw earnings uh, this week. We have, uh, and again, I'm just speaking from the technology point of view. Uh, we have AMD and Uber and Qualcomm and Shop and PayPal. Uh, obviously, Apple and Amazon are going to be the biggies. Alibaba as well. If you trade Alibaba uh, towards the end of the week. So, so far, pretty mixed bag uh, on the earnings uh, scoreboard so far with technology. But hey, if you look at the final scoreboard, and again, that's the end of the day, the final scoreboard is the final scoreboard. You know, we're still, the Qs are only, what, a couple of points away from yearly highs which went and look at and look at the 60 minute view right we are we're an, a point away from reclaiming 385 that's the big number going into you know that's the big number uh going into a uh, monday session this 385 level right the high here is 385 uh, even with this massive reversal here i uh, put in a high of th uh, 384.52 so if the queues can start reclaiming back 385 yeah we're going to start rallying back again so crazy market, right? We're all human beings. We're going to be right. We're going to be wrong a lot. The most important thing is own it, right? Own it. Don't run away from it. Don't worry, guys. I promise you throughout your career, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to, to, to be that, you know, that trader that needs to be right. You don't need to be right. You need to be fiscally responsible, right? I don't care, you know, how many times I get it wrong theoretically, as long as I'm putting myself in, in, in situations that long-term I'm still okay, we're going to be fine. The problem is the trader, especially the new trader, especially with social media, uh, always seems to be that I need to be right. I can't, you know, I can't let sh people see me uh, with my faults. I can't, you know, uh, you know, I ha can't have people think that I'm stupid. Guys, you know, uh, big, big, uh, big, 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 big disappointment, right? Big, big, absolutely disappointment. Newsflash: all of us are wrong, right? All of us are wrong. Traders get it wrong, and we're going to continue to get it wrong. Our job is just to kind of omit how many times we get it wrong so we can thrive for longevity. So going into this week, again, what a difference between a day makes. Again, 385 uh, is to the upside, right? 385 is to the upside. You can see it here. It stopped three times uh, at this 385 level. The bulls are going to need to get above this 385 level to attack 
Uh, the upper Bollinger, obviously, the, the downside, right? The downside is still this 20-day moving average. And obviously, uh, we are now, you know, 11 points away from that downside moving average. But the way this market trades, uh, anything could happen, uh, anything at time. So always, you know, one trade at a time, uh, one day at a time. So let's talk about some uh, ideas for for uh friday i mean for monday right uh roku uh congratulations to all you guys who caught that uh 7550 uh pivot on friday uh i mean huge move huge huge move close at the highs of the day uh the the play on roku is and they you know they started coming for the 100 105 calls short term the the, the play the value play is obviously any dip on roku into this rising support i preferably will, would like to see this green line right this green line and again we don't know what the price is going to be because they adjust monday morning uh but the green line kind of represents kind of the 10-day moving average so i would love to see uh roku on a dip into rising support trap go red to green and take out friday's highs for a potential uh day to run uh lift lift is, is starting to look good again uh we had a really nice pivot on lift about two weeks ago it's starting to get good again they continue to come uh for the short term 14 15 calls uh, definitely, definitely one to watch. Netflix finally might be ready, finally might be ready for the dead cat bounce, a as well as, and I know somebody's going to turn around and say, well, didn't it bounce $12 on uh, Friday? Yeah, it did, but it still didn't take out the previous day's channel. Remember, stock cannot go higher. It could go up, but it can't go higher if it doesn't take out the previous day's range. And you can see it stopped perfectly on the previous day's range. This is actually one to watch, especially uh, if they sell off the market early. A little bit of profit taken from Friday's session. Let's see if it could t reclaim the five day. And if it can reclaim the five day, maybe you'll get an actual day to run into the into the mid 30s. So definitely keep an eye on that. And, um, you know, a stock like TTD, right? It was added to the NASDAQ 100, had good earnings. I believe that earnings were early. I know for a fact it was added to the NASDAQ 100. It's flagging pretty nicely here. Uh, watch this thing at the top of the channel here. Um, you know, Tesla, again, <laughs> Tesla got saved, man. Got saved by this, got saved by this, um, by this number, by this uh, PC number, boy, oh boy. But again, it still hasn't taken out the previous day's range. For, again, for me to get bullish, like to really get bullish on Tesla, and you can see it's kind of in the middle of the range here in this whole channel here, it's going to need to reclaim the 10-day moving average or lose the bottom of the range here. Right now, as you can see, it's right in the middle of both. So I'm kind of delta neutral so far on Tesla. Uh, Amazon uh, actually looks pretty good for this week uh, ahead of the numbers. Uh, they've been coming for the 135s, 140s. Uh, into Amazon earnings. Uh, Apple reports this week as well. Uh, hasn't really done anything since that glorious spike that we got intraday um, last week. So it's something to watch as well. But again, market's crazy, guys. Always remember, it's never going to make any sense. You're never going to be perfect. You're never going to be the quote-unquote so-called uh, great trader. Again, I've said this for years. There's no such thing as a great trader. All of us throughout the years just get less crappier. And I say that in the most PG way possible. We just get cra less crappier and try to omit the things that we know are wrong. Revenge trading, boredom trading, um, you know, trading because the market's opened up because we're getting value and 3,000 other moving parts. So again, guys, wild couple of days. Hope everybody thrived. Hope everybody survived. Uh, more important, it's over, right? Just like the way you were 21 and 16 years old, right? That part of your life is over. That past week is over. You know, the past is the past. We don't live there anymore. Monday is the first day of your trading rest of your life. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.